Bienvenue to Welcome to Reporters Plus here on France 24. In this edition of our longer format program, we track a family of migrants as they make their way from Congo to Canada via Brazil. And they're not alone. More and more migrants from countries such as Congo, Senegal, Nigeria and Guinea-Bissau are chancing this route. This is a film of a five-month-long odyssey alongside a family of four, which includes two children, and the route they take is frankly inconceivable. We pick up the trail in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Every step of the way, their minds are focused because if they're caught, they'll be sent back to their homeland. And they say a fate worse than death awaits. The last prayer before the long trip begins. Rosette is 42 years old. She fled the Democratic Republic of Congo. In the morning, she will secretly continue her journey, along with her husband and her daughters, Maria, five years old, and Pauline, 13 years old. Their goal is Canada, at the end of an uncertain, expensive, and at times deadly road. 20,000 kilometers await, along with 11 borders to be crossed in the hands of powerful clandestine networks of smugglers and cartels. Their only guide, messages left by other migrants on social networks. He said this. As soon as you get to the border, there'll be taxi drivers. Those taxi drivers, we pay them 100 reals at the border with Peru. You need to be careful. They're traitors. Rosette's husband, Godet, doesn't want his face to be seen. He says he got death threats for his opposition to the regime of Joseph Kabila in the Democratic Republic of Congo. I've got sweatshirts. I've got sheets. That's what I use to keep warm at night. The family has agreed to be filmed. At their request, we won't use their real names. For five months, we will travel with them to Canada, a new exile for illegal immigrants. Sao Paulo, a metropolis with a population of 12 million. A new migrant route for thousands of men and women starts here, in these neighborhoods. Many are undocumented, illegal. Every year, nearly 7,000 of them find refuge with Father Paolo. Over 30,000 Haitians came to Brazil after the earthquake there in 2010. But in recent months, asylum seekers have come from much further away. 76% come from Africa, most are from Angola, but there are other smaller groups from the Democratic Republic of Congo, Nigeria, Senegal, Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, Sierra Leone, and the rest are from Latin America. There are those who turn their backs on Europe and the Mediterranean. Armed only with a tourist visa, they are looking for a warmer welcome in Brazil, or just a place to travel through when the ultimate goal is the United States or Canada. They are two Moroccans. When a human being no longer sees the chance of leading a dignified life, he or she seeks something else, even if it means risking their life. It doesn't matter if there's a President Trump or not, whether there's a wall or no wall. Are you cold? Are you still cold? Do you want a jacket? I'll see if I have one. Rosette, meanwhile, 
is leaving Sao Paulo for good. Carrying only the one bag, she heads to Sao Paulo's bus station. Rosette and Godet won't be traveling alone. They meet up with two more families. They're Congolese too. Once on the road, they hope that they will find strength in numbers. They all want to seek asylum in North America, but very few of them will reach that goal. To reach Peru, they first have to cross five separate regions of Brazil. That's four days on the bus, 1,000 kilometers per day. If you walk in the fire, you will not burn yourself, and the flame will not kiss you. For I am the eternal God. He reassures me he has already given me my journey. I know that I walk with the Lord wherever I go. He will not leave me. He's always with me. If they do reach Canada, Rosette and Godet plan to seek political asylum. I don't want to live outside my country. I don't want that. I'm doing this because I left my country. I fled because there's no good governance and because of the bad faith of our leaders. You whites, you don't leave your country because you have peace, you have democracy. But we leave because there's nothing. You whites need to help us in your countries because all of this is caused by the whites. The days keep adding up. Whenever they can, the men in the group connect to a Wi-Fi network. This is how they find out more about these unknown lands. As the border approaches, the group discusses their next move. Now we need a new strategy. We must take buses only at night. This will keep hotel costs down. We came here together to make a decision. From here, we'll go to the border. We'll take the taxi. We need to stick together as one. There needs to be love between us. We need communion. We need to speak the same language. If all goes well, they will meet again on the Peruvian side of the border. From here, they have to take the taxi to Assis, Brazil. This is the route used by most of the undocumented migrants heading to Peru. We come to a stop a few meters from the border between Brazil and Peru. There's no crossing the border by taxi. Godet has struck a deal with a smuggler to avoid any identity checks. We decided on $50 each. That's the normal price. He has to pay the policeman as well. He has to keep something for himself. If we get caught, we'll get sent back. From this point onward, Rosette, Godet and their children go into hiding. Their illegal journey begins here. The smuggler's van disappears into the distance and across the border without any checks. Ecuador is next, the country unlike others on the American continent that welcomes migrants to its shores. There are almost no visa restrictions. 230,000 asylum seekers have already sought refuge here. That's a record in the Americas. Here, as in Sao Paulo, some migrants' journeys stop. They rebuild their lives here, deterred by the prospect of the deadly road that lies ahead. Rosette is just passing through. We meet again in Tulcan, on the border with Colombia. I've lost weight. The important thing is that we keep going. Yes, we have to reach our goal. 
Peru was tough for us, but we're okay. I thought the police were there to protect us. The police, they searched us. They took the $700 that I gave them. Rosette and her daughters get on board with another smuggler. The Colombian border police randomly does identity checks. In case of arrest, illegal immigrants are sent back to Ecuador. Rumi Chaka is one of the busiest border posts in the country. As night falls, Rosette and her group rely on the smugglers to blend in with the traffic. They don't know if these traffickers work in good faith. We have to be honest in what we do, but some traffickers are not. So for the migrants, it's like signing their death warrant. Traffickers want to bring them in illegally. They want to rob them, attack them, take advantage of them and rape the women. Faced with local authorities with limited powers, a new army of smugglers and traffickers has sprung up. One of them agrees to tell us about his role in an international network of people smugglers. He doesn't deny that they can be violent, but he accuses the authorities of being complicit in the smuggling of migrants. In Ecuador, in Ecuador we work with Interpol. In Colombia, we work with the border police. Everyone knows that without their help, We'd never do this. We'd never get to where we pass on the migrants to someone else. The border authorities actually admit to some of this, but they say they are also fighting relentlessly against the corruption of their agents. Several networks of smugglers work here, as many as there are routes out of the country. They all lead to the same destination, North America. Rosette made it to Colombia, but the immigration services pick her up in Medellin. I'm Officer Immigration Colombia, okay? I wait here and relax, okay? Time maybe four or three hours, okay? They take photos, fingerprints, and her signature. Colombia has adapted its migration policy to this new reality. Nearly 35,000 illegal immigrants were stopped in 2016. They are registered, released, and ordered to leave the country. It's been 11 days on the road from Sao Paulo. Stress and fatigue are getting to Rosette. I regret my decision, but I can't do anything about it. It's not easy, but I have no choice. <laughs> Even if I had to go back, it would be hard. <laughs> but I have hope that God will be the one to take me all the way. A few hours later, Rosette and her traveling group are in fact released. They are free to pursue their journey northwards. One more day on a bus. Ahead of them lies the deadliest leg of their odyssey. The Darien Gap is a hellish no man's land, firmly in the hands of drug traffickers and the Gulf Clan paramilitary group. It's the only way of getting from Colombia to Panama. All migrants have to get through here. In the streets of Turbo, migrants and smugglers rub shoulders and negotiate. Despite waves of arrests by the authorities, migrant smuggling is flourishing. From here, all migrants have to cross the Gulf of Uraba to reach Capo Ghana. The waters of the Gulf are dangerous. The boats sometimes are not seaworthy. Shipwrecks and drownings are common.
On land and at sea, military operations and arrests are meant to dismantle the networks of smugglers. But no matter the obstacles, it's the best option for those migrants who escaped death back home. We also come from Somalia. My father, brother, only three men my mother. Always. That's why I can away. So I'm looking for another life for this. Whatever is happening, we are ready. Either die, either life, just move. Yeah. Capo Ghana is the last stop before entering the jungle. In these colorful hotels, two worlds collide. Tourists and migrants, foreigners on holiday and foreigners in exile. After a first failed attempt at sea, Rosette and her group have just landed back in Capo Ghana. Like them, other groups of migrants also try to negotiate their passage through the jungle. But they are all stopped in their tracks. The army is patrolling the area. If you manage to cross the waters of the sea, rivers can never overwhelm you. I really saw that today. What I see is that there is still hope. There is still a future waiting for me. I see there are still good things that God has in store for me because I know that, geographically speaking, where I came from is far away, but where I'm going is not far away. Rosette and her group decide to retrace their steps. They will try their luck again in a few weeks' time, once the army has completed its anti-cartel patrols. Our own crew, though, decides to continue along the migrant route. In order to use the same path as the migrants, there is no other option than to pay a smuggler. During the rainy season, the strongest one in the whole world, the jungle quickly turns into a trap. The locals say this, la selva come, the jungle eats. Right now, the route isn't being used so much, so it's OK, but it can be a lot worse. A jacket. And look. Even a scorpion. Watch it go. We have people who get a little tired after the small climb. We come across some who sit here. The smugglers urge them to keep going. But there are some who stay behind, and the smugglers who come next pick them up. Then there are the irresponsible ones. Those who suffer must be spared. They need to slow down. Every 10 minutes, they stop a little and sit down with them. If we don't do that, there are some who die. The effort kills them. We're getting to the top of the mountain now. Each smuggler is responsible for his territory. Here, migrant smuggling is a business. A smuggler has to network and advertise his skills. We get our hands on this rare footage taken by the smugglers themselves. We just finished our climb up the hill of death. We're heading for Panama. My friends, we're getting to the hill of death. Fede, Yasmani, El Gordo and the others. Follow this guy. He's a good guy and he's the smuggler you need. This is something their bosses demand. The smugglers have to show proof of life of the migrants, which is then transferred to the next network of smugglers. In these images, migrants from Bangladesh, Nepal and China, they've already travelled half the globe to get here. 
there's disease, drownings and armed attacks. Those who die en route are abandoned on the spot. There is no official data on the number of victims each year. Their stories are lost in these streams of mud and rain. On our way here, unfortunately, we found the dead body of a migrant who died on his way to the American dream. In Panama, our journey takes us through the jungle's indigenous communities. They are poor, but for a time they did help exhausted migrants before closing their doors, overwhelmed by the sheer amount of people passing through their land. Those who manage to reach the Pan American Highway take it straight to the capital, four hours drive away. Then they head to Paso Canoas on the northern border with Costa Rica. We take that road with Freddy, a local journalist. It started with groups of 10, 15 or 20. But a year ago, in November and December, at the border between Costa Rica and Panama, things went crazy because there were between 5,000 and 8,000 foreigners. As soon as these migrants arrive in Ecuador, the smugglers and their networks are already there. They communicate with each other in Panama and Costa Rica to determine precisely which groups they will transport from Paso Canoas to Nicaragua. These roads are used for the transport of illegal goods, the trafficking of people and especially for drug trafficking. From here, it will cost a migrant between 350 and 500 euros to get to Costa Rica. We reach the Peñas Blancas refugee camp on the next border with Nicaragua. Actually, I'm just passing by, but really, 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 being in Costa Rica, I will never forget in a hurry. Kudos, Costa Rica. I love you. Te amo. Nobody here expected the hell on earth that they experienced in the Darien Gap jungle. 15 days in the forest. There are dead people. There are other families coming. You see, daddy is dead. We stayed with the mothers and children. I saw another woman, a 35-year-old woman who died in front of me. We were together, dead people. Now if you see me like this, it's thanks to God. If you are hearing me, please don't think of going through that route because it's bad. It's very dangerous. Snakes, python, the water, the scorpion, everything in the forest. I wouldn't advise my enemy to go through that forest. While they wait to find the right smuggler or to raise the money they need to reach Nicaragua, the migrants support each other. They adapt. Then, they continue their journey. The truth is, we never imagined seeing this massive arrival of these people coming from Africa, South Asia, countries like Nepal, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Burkina Faso. The sums of money they spend on crossing the ocean, not to mention the roads they must take to escape the controls, they arrive in very poor health. We don't know if all of them reach their goal. We think that many never make it. We take the road that leads to Nicaragua. But at the border, our team is not allowed in. The local authorities don't want us to report on the smuggling of migrants across this border. Here, smugglers demand up to a thousand euros per person to cross the border. It's a fortune. Some migrants will give everything they have before sometimes being arrested anyway and sent back to Costa Rica. Our team is forced to stop filming at this juncture, but we do keep in touch with Rosette and her family. 
Two months later, we learned that their fellow travelers abandoned the trip in Colombia to return to Brazil. But Rosette and her family continued. Despite the risks, they got to Costa Rica. They shared with us the footage they took with their own phones. After escaping death in the jungle of Darien, in shock but relieved, they were able to join the refugee camp where we had also stopped. Refugee camp in Costa Rica, La Cruz. This is La Cruz. Their stop is a brief one. In just six days, Rosette and her family cross four borders. Another smuggler took them by boat past a large part of Nicaragua. They reached Honduras on foot, a trip that lasted days and nights. Here, an exhausted Rosette is seen carrying her daughter on her back, surrounded by other migrants. This is the border between Honduras and Nicaragua. We're going to the immigration services to register. The goodwill of the border agents and long hours of traveling bring Rosette and her family to Guatemala. Here we are in Honduras, on the Guatemala border. To get to Mexico, the migrants must then avoid drowning in the Suchiate River. Their means of transport are crafts made of inner tubes from truck tires and wooden pallets. Dad, hold that aside so it doesn't fall into the water. Here we are crossing from Guatemala into Mexico. We managed to contact them and join up with them again in Tijuana, on the border with the United States. Rosette left all of her savings in the hands of smugglers to get here. That's over 4,000 euros spent since leaving Brazil. We estimate that this is how every year tens of millions of euros are fed into the smuggling networks in Latin America. After some previous attempts failed, a shelter for migrants finally agrees to house the family. Rosette is relieved and enjoys the respite. No, really, it was a risky trip, very risky. God helped us. We didn't see anything, but it's really risky. I'm happy to be here because uh, I know I'm already at the border. I'm in the city, the last city of Mexico. I'm very happy. The next step for us is the United States, and after the US, we can go to Canada. We still have that dream because my wish is to live over there in Canada because I know that this is the part that speaks French. I'll adapt easily. The United States is so close, yet so far, but it will take weeks to reach Canada. Both countries have a migration agreement. If they are stopped in the United States, Rosette and her family will no longer be able to seek asylum in Canada. Their only choice is to cross the United States illegally. New dangers await. They will have to survive the desert, armed militias, and the cartels that operate between Mexico and the US. According to the UN, over 400 migrants died on this border in 2017. For others, the road leads to a final request for asylum to the US authorities at the Tijuana border crossing. On the other side of the border lies San Diego. In these detention centers, migrants can be kept for up to six months. Despite our many requests, we were not allowed to film inside. In these centers, detainees await their release or deportation. Often they wait without any real legal assistance, according to immigration lawyers who have seen a recent change. Things have evolved and has gotten the 
much worse. The U.S. attitude towards immigration has changed. This is not a camp for refugees. They actually hold them in a jail. They don't distinguish between somebody who's a terrorist, who's a criminal, who's an asylum seeker. And that's what the irony of uh, America has become. The Statute of Liberty that says, give me your tired, give me your poor, give me your persecuted, uh, where you know, that we go visit in New York Harbor, that image uh, is uh, tainted forever. Uh, we need to change that statute and perhaps move it to Canada. <laughs> the poem engraved at the foot of the Statue of Liberty is still right there in the Hudson River. But it resonates more now in the messages of the Canadian Prime Minister, like in this tweet posted shortly after the arrival of Donald Trump in the White House. For his part, Donald Trump is going after the 11 million illegal immigrants in the United States. His administration acted quickly. Within a year, the number of arrests by immigration agents has nearly doubled. Is this your truck? Yes, sir. Can we check? Are you carrying a weapon? No. Never? No. Never carried a weapon? No. We're going to take him to immigration in Dallas. The newfound fear of mass arrests has many migrants dreaming of Canada. They reach New York City, a place of transit for many of those who want to reach the next border. Many take these buses to Plattsburgh in upstate New York. On board in the middle of the night, Adams, age 17, agrees to talk to us. After a dispute over a family inheritance in Nigeria, Adams says he fled a certain death. I want to study, I want to go to school. I don't know anybody in Canada. I have no family in Canada. I don't have church because I don't want to be sent back home because I know what Trump is doing right now. Three days ago, five people from Nigeria went back home. They deported them, about five people in my presence. I'm scared because I don't know what will happen. With a tourist visa, Adams was able to reach New York directly by plane. For him, the road was short. He is hoping for refuge in Montreal. He reaches Plattsburgh at four in the morning and finds a taxi driver who will take him to the border. For this taxi driver, the shuttle service between Plattsburgh and the Canadian border is now part of everyday life. Time. Yeah, they come up all the time, but they're coming up a lot more now, you know. I don't take them across the border or nothing. I'm just a cab driver, that's all. They ask me to take them, and I take them where they want to go. And that's what, what we're told we're, we're supposed to do by Border Patrol. So, you know, they don't bother us. And I guess the president's the one that said they have to leave the country. I don't know. I don't really get into it. I just feel sorry for the people, you know. In the middle of the night, three taxis follow one another into this lane in the middle of the countryside. I'm afraid, so I didn't know what would happen. The taxi driver tries to reassure the young migrant. See a path. You'll see the gentleman will walk down to you. Just listen to what they say and then walk over to him. Police, we're not immigration. If you cross here, you're under arrest. You understand? If you want to enter Canada legally, you have to go further east to a legal point of entry. If you cross here, you will be under arrest. We're not immigration, we're the police. You can see that? Good. Okay. So that's your choice to make. If you do cross, you're under arrest. Okay? okay. All right. 
right. so now, sorry, on the left. Being arrested also means entering Canada. A few hours later, Adams is transferred to Montreal. The asylum procedure takes months. In case of refusal, the migrants are expelled by plane to their countries of origin. And we'll keep you up to date on the progress of Rosette, her children, her husband in their new life, as well as all the other migrants we met in our film. Thank you for watching Reporters Plus. See it again on our website, francevancat.com. Stay with us.